Good afternoon and welcome to COVID-19 Awareness Program. Mental health is important at every stage of life, from childhood, adolescence, and through adulthood. Now, with the current COVID-19 situation we are faced with worldwide, it affects how we think, feel, and act as mental health includes our emotion, emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It also helps determine how we handle stress and make choices. We know that we are not only fighting the virus, uh, but we are also uh, managing uh, stigma, fear, and discrimination. So today, uh, I'm sitting here with our mental health expert, uh, Aisha Malik, to talk about uh, why is it important to, um, uh, to talk, to understand about the mental health aspect uh, on this disease. So Aisha, can you explain to our uh, audience today um, why is it important to, to understand about the mental health on mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19? Thanks, Sari. <coughs> so, as Sari said, we're not just talking about an outbreak of COVID-19. What we're also seeing is an increase in the anxiety that people are experiencing. So it's really important to think about um, mental health as part of the public health response to COVID-19. So you will hear this message repeated quite a lot, but it's really important to bear in mind that fear and anxiety is part of the normal response to this new situation. So many things can cause fear, and one of those things are the, is misinformation and rumours. So this is something that can exacerbate people's fear and it's why a, a repeated message for managing fear in the COVID-19 response is to, to get facts. So facts minimise fear um, and these facts can be obtained from credible sources or trusted scientific sources, for example WHO um, or your national or local public health body as well. And many of you might not uh, think that you are experiencing fear or worry or some of you might be thinking that way. It can express itself in various different ways so you might be experiencing a high level of questions uh, that you're as asking yourself or a high number of thoughts that you're having. So questions like, how do I protect myself? How do I protect others? Uh, what's going to happen with my workplace? So these are all very natural questions to be asking. And if you're asking these questions, then I would again encourage you to go find the facts uh, and get the answers um, as well. So fear is something that's designed to keep us safe uh, so it makes us take action to keep ourselves safe, but sometimes the actions that we take might be inadvertently harmful to ourselves or to others. So this can include things like uh, stigma, this can include uh, panic-like behaviours, it can include things like uh, over-watching uh, distressing sources of information. So sometimes fear uh, can be both helpful and keep us safe, but also could be be harmful as well and so it's important for us to think about how do we manage that fear. Children can experience stress and they might present in many different ways. They could be more attached to you or more clingy uh, to you. They could be sad or crying or withdrawn or even uh, to the point of bedwetting if they're very anxious. So children express stress in different ways and we, what we encourage is for parents to give as much love and attention and their time uh, to comforting their children if they are experiencing this. Now children are very smart, uh, they're very perceptive, they can tell if something is different or if something has changed. For example, perhaps you're having, as a parent who's working, perhaps you're having to work at home more and your child has noticed that, or perhaps their school has closed um, and they've noticed that as well. So children are perceptive to these changes and will naturally ask questions. What we would do is encourage you as parents or caregivers of young people to be as honest as possible with them uh, because giving children clear messages about the situation in a way that's adapted for their age can help them to understand what's going on. So remember, again, the, the idea of facts minimising fear applies to every part of the population, whether you're a young person or a parent.
Yeah, look, as we've seen and heard from WHO mental health expert Aisha Malik, misinformation and the spreading of rumors can cause stress and panic. Now, important point to take note of is to get validated information on COVID-19 from credible sources and avoid spreading rumors through social media. Now, apart from this, we also have stigma and discrimination, which are associated right now with COVID-19. What can we do to fight this? Hi, my name is Cassie and I'm 16 years old. I've seen on social media that the new coronavirus outbreak has provoked a lot of social stigma and discrimination. This is harmful to not only those who suffer from it, but for everyone. Stigma can isolate people. It can drive people to hide their illness to avoid discrimination and can even prevent them from seeking medical care. So it is very important to avoid stigmatizing people. And we can all do this. How? Basically by understanding that words matter. Do talk about the new coronavirus, but don't attach locations or ethnicity to the disease. Do talk about people who have or may have COVID-19, people who died after contracting COVID-19, but don't refer to the people with the disease as COVID-19 cases or victims. Do talk about people acquiring or contracting COVID-19, but don't talk about people transmitting COVID-19, infecting others, or spreading the virus, as it implies intentional transmission and assigns blame. Do speak and share accurate information about risk from COVID-19, but don't repeat or share rumors that are not confirmed or language that spreads fear. Do talk positively and emphasize the effectiveness of preventative measures, such as hand washing, but don't emphasize or dwell on the negative or threatening messages. Most importantly, do good. Use your social media account to spread facts and solidarity. This will help us to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, look, Bradley, when we talk about uh, discrimination, it's a direct result of stigma. Um, the negative um, aspects of it um, has always been having the kind of effect that affects a lot of lives, and we don't want to see that happening with uh, the current pandemic right now, COVID-19. Yeah, well, you know, De Niro, it's human nature to talk about things, and, and the current state that we are in and the the affairs of the world at the moment are affected by this uh, widespread pandemic. Um, often we forget as human beings to remember that these are also people uh, who we are talking about. Um, often, you know, people make mistakes by, you know, um, labeling um, uh, people who are now yeah. um, living with the virus and uh, are receiving, um, you know, treatment at the moment. Now, like I said, um, it's important to remember that all of us um, have have rights under the you know um, universal human rights for uh, all living beings, and um, we also have the responsibility to respect others as well. So that's um, something that we sometimes take for granted um, because of of the situations that we of the situation that we are in or of or for um, the status that um, uh, we are in. Now, when, we, when it comes to people, words matter, yes. as uh, was stated in the video. Words plus action contribute to, you know, a, a person's, uh, you know, mindset at times. And when we're dealing with people, human beings are different, huh? Yeah. And so dealing with feelings, emotions, also, you know, contributes to, you know, the, the psychological uh, outcome of a person. Very true. Look, we'll go for a break now. And on the other side, COVID-19 awareness continues. You're watching MTV's COVID-19 awareness program. The simple act of washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds can save your life. Hand hygiene is a great way to prevent infections. Wash your hands with water. 
Wasim Han Wantemwara. Apply soap, put him soap, rub hands palm to palm, rub him inside blong tuplahan blong you one time. Right palm over left hand with interlaced fingers and repeat for the other. Rub him hand on top long backside long naraplahan. Rub palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Wasim namel blong ol pinga ol sem. Back of fingers to opposing palms with fingers overlocked. Use him one side hand long wasim one plus side hand. Na walk him one kind long narapla. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in right palm and repeat for the right side. Wasim mama pinga ol sem. Rinse hands with water. Use water long wasim soap long hand. Dry hands thoroughly with a single use towel. Clean him water long hand. One time one plug clean pela towel or half lap lap. Your hands are safe. All hand belong you in our stop clean. Yes, as you've seen in the video, hand washing is simple yet makes a big difference when it comes to protecting yourself and those around you from contracting infections or even spreading them. Huh? Remember, wasim an blue all the time, long abrusim sick. Before we go, MTV would like to thank the following partners, Protex and Telecom, whose support has made this program possible to inform, educate, make a way, and prepare Papua New Guineans nationwide on COVID-19. Let's all be obedient in following measures that are in place to fight against COVID-19. Continue practicing good hygiene, if healthy, keep a positive mind and keep God close. I leave you now with Reverend Pastor Joseph Walters. Good afternoon to you. Once again, thanks for joining us. In the book of Psalms 91, we've been looking at a few uh, of those wonderful promises of Scripture, assuring us, giving us confidence, building our faith to shift from the fearful, negative frame of thinking and mind and switching to the positive side of God's promises for your life and my life, for our homes and families and our communities and the nation as a whole. So I want to once again encourage you to use this time. Spend it wisely. Don't waste it. Spend quality time as husbands and fathers with our wives and our children. And families get together. And take the Bible for a change. And read the promises of the Bible, some of which I have already quoted, but we are mostly majoring on Psalm 91 because there's a wonderful things in there regarding such things as pestilence and danger and destruction and plagues. And some of them are so real and so true. The Bible already knew that those things are going to happen or come against us or come to us, but also promised for our safety and protection if we dare believe in scriptures. So once again, let me encourage you, fathers, take the lead as the head of the family, as the priest of the home. Bring the family together. Go into your secret place. Go into your chambers. Stay together. Give quality time. And uh, think in God. Think about God and let God come and rule and take over the family and the community for a change. This is our prayer together in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that this nation will change as a result of this short time together in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>